For almost 20 years, many people in Boston have marked the end of summer in the South End and Lower Roxbury at the Beantown Jazz Festival. The event was started by the owner of Darrell's Corner Bar and Kitchen, Darrell Settles, and produced by Berklee College of Music. Starting this year, there's a new event with the restaurant's new owner to tell us about the Boss Town Fest. Happening September 7th is the proprietor and general manager of Darrell's Corner Bar and Kitchen. Nia Grace, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Nia. Absolutely. Some of us might remember you from being with BNN, but uh, tell me about what you remember about Daryl's, because this is a place you went to when you were growing up in Boston, I'm sure. Yes, um, I remember walking into Daryl's for the first time and uh, truly loving the environment, um, loving the entertainment, the food, the people, and I actually remember walking in and saying, if I ever owned a venue, I want it to be just like this. And, and as far as the, the partnership, because uh, what was the vision driving this at the origin going back 18 years ago? So 18 years ago, I would say that uh, Daryl, a uh, transplant to Boston as well from uh, South Carolina, Aiken, South Carolina, he wanted to see a little bit more in the community. He lived in the area, he worked in the area, had a business in the area, and just knew that what we offered at Daryl's or at Bob the Chef's at that time was something that was unique, but people loved. And so he wanted to bring it to the streets, and that's the same thing that we're doing now. Well, uh, I, I, I've been in a couple of these Beantown festivals over the years. Uh, uh, the streets can get really crowded. There's a great mix of people. You got food trucks and you got vendors and different kinds of music. Uh, it sounds too good to, to stop. So how are you going to change this? So for us, it, that was that was the impetus for us actually moving forward. Um, I'm the new owner of Daryl's. September 7th will be uh, my first year anniversary. Um, and that'll be the same day as the Boss Town Music Fest. And that was the thing. Um, from the customers that come to Daryl's, uh, the people that I see in the street, they were very saddened when Berkeley announced that the Beantown Jazz Festival was going to be no more after 2018. And so with that, you know, I even felt the, the void, having been a business who was a vendor at the festival and experienced, you know, that, that one day of community and music and food and fun. Um, I, I just knew that, that we couldn't stop there and that Daryl, who is, I can call today, he'd been sad if uh, we were to stop there today. So what we decided to do was keep it moving and keep it going and continue the tradition. Um, Daryl's Corner Bar and Kitchen, or Bob the Chef at that time, was in fact the cornerstone of the festival, that if you were going to, on the first year, if you were going to eat, if you were going to listen to music, you were going to Daryl's or Bob the Chef's at that time. So for us this year, it was a matter of, well, let's not stop here. After 18 years, why would we stop? The South End community, the Roxbury community, the city of Boston itself looked forward to it. And, um, and that's what we're excited about. This is BNN News, and we're talking about the Boss Town Fest with Nia Grace from Daryl's Corner Bar and Kitchen. Uh, Nia, there's a slight change in the name of this. Even though the, the, the name of your business is the same, uh, the music festival has a different name. It, there's no more jazz. It's just Boss Town Fest. What, what's the difference we're talking about? So uh, with the evolution of time and music and, and, and the community, we needed to be a little bit more open. Yes, at the core root of the music that we uh, serve up throughout the week as well as what we're going to have on September 7th. It's jazz. We have three different jazz artists that in fact fuse a little bit something different. We have Mayana and Ken. They're going to be more so that traditional contemporary jazz that you're used to. We have Gregory Groover, who is a Berkeley alum twice. Um, he's also uh, rooted in uh, the Charles Street AME Church. Well, that's where his father is pastor. And he has more of a jazz spiritual kind of um, flow when he comes and, and to his music. And he was playing that last August up in Fort and Hill, the Negro Spiritual ex Project. Exactly. And so with that, it's, it's more so we wanted to evolve and let more people know that you're welcome here, too. So if your music taste is not traditionally in jazz, don't feel offended or don't feel ostracized to come to this event. It's for you. So we wanted to focus on all music. We've got blues, we've got funk, we've got Caribbean, uh, R&B and soul, all music. And a little hip hop. Though, and a mixture. little hip hop. Exactly. So there's a band, uh, Noir Soul, uh, Noir Soul. They are uh, R&B, hip hop, pop blend that they're very exciting. And a lot of them are Berkeley trained and they have their jazz roots, which you also hear throughout the day when they're performing. But they they, they know how to fuse it and, and make it fun. In, in one local name, Wally Ali. Wally Ali. So he's local and not local at the same time. He plays at Daryl's, uh, which is really exciting. He is a legend, and, and many people don't realize, you know, that he is. Uh, blues, funk, Motown era, 
Uh, he's he's worked with Gladys Knight. He's you know, and and I think that he's so exciting. And and then he's not just a great guitarist. When he gets on vocals, that's exciting too. So. Now, what's interesting about this year's festival, it's also coinciding with a five-day uh, series of activities that the uh, Boston Chamber of Commerce is getting behind, the fierce urgency of now. Yes. Uh, how does that change the makeup of the mix here? I think um, what we're trying to do is continually bridge the gap um, when we're talking about generations, especially here in the city. Um, sometimes we may have a, a, what might people think is maybe an older generation, but we're really trying to focus on millennials and trying to keep them engaged and want them to be here. And so I think that us having that partnership with the uh, Boston Chamber of Commerce and the Fierce Urgency and Now Festival, it's really letting folks know that if you are here, if you come here for school, if you come here for work, there are more things to, for you to do. Um, we're really trying to focus on a well-rounded experience while you're here in Boston. And there are businesses or organizations or groups or sometimes even just individuals who are committed to letting you have a well-rounded experience here. Well, we should remind people, especially those who have not been been out to the past festivals, uh, the, the day and the, the hours when this is going to be happening? Absolutely. So it's going to be on Saturday, September 7th, uh, right in the South End on Columbus Avenue. Uh, this year it'll be from Douglas Park to Mass Ave, and we'll be there from 12 to 6. 